Vicki here, and I'm glad that you could be here with me tonight. I know it's a little late, but I had church and some things that I had to do. But I really wanted to do this self-care discussion with you guys because I just feel like it's super important nowadays. So why don't we just go ahead and dive right in? Okay, let me get my notes, and here we go. Okay, so as you know, if you watched the video from yesterday, we started talking about this feeling of guilt right? And I wanted to talk specifically with you today about how we can use that feeling of guilt to our advantage. So for example, yesterday I had mentioned that for me, guilt is a good thing. When I feel guilt, it's because something I've done, you know, it hasn't really lived up to my standards. And so as a result, this fuels me to be even better. I want to learn. I study. I practice. I grow so that the next time I do something, I've got it, right? And also, when something is really difficult for me to do, well, because of this feeling of guilt, I'm motivated to go find people who excel at what I'm not excelling at currently. I go talk to them, and I get their insight, and then I implement that advice that they give me, right? And this, again, it fuels me to be better. However, negative teacher guilt makes us feel like we're not doing enough. Right? And all of us teachers, we know that we could literally work 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and never be finished. Right? And this is simply because education doesn't have a finish line, right? Which is why it's all the more important to be self disciplined because we're not always going to have the motivation and we're not always going to have the time. Right? So, as a result, of this negative feeling of teacher guilt, what do we do, right? Well, let's be honest for a second. When things get hard, right, we already, we resort to our already established habits, right? When we're feeling pressure, in other words, we're gonna resort to what we feel comfortable with, things that we already know, even if those behaviors and habits are not so good for us, right? And so what typically happens is that when things get hard, we oftentimes will start justifying our toxic behavior, right? When something's hard, we start coming up with all sorts of reasons why we can't do something. And I know I've been there, right? We start justifying why we can't do this, why we can't spend time with our kids, why we can't work out, why we can't eat healthy, why we can't get up earlier, why we can't feed our minds with motivational material, why we can't get this or that done, and why this situation will never change, right? So oddly enough, then we justify working harder. It's just a spiral, right? Eight hours a day then turns into 10. 10 hours a day turns into 12. 12 hours a day then turns into 14 and then 16 hour days, right? And so as we do this, things just keep getting harder and harder. It's kind of like that snake, right, that's like eating its own tail and you don't know where the head begins and the tail ends, that kind of thing, right? And so as we do this, the cycle, things just get harder and harder. And when the pressure becomes too much and when we're wishing things would change and when we start to blame this mandate, this politician, this situation, this principal, this parent, this student, this everything, right? Listen, here's the bottom line. Either you run your day or your day runs you, right? When I start my day, I ask myself two questions. What's important this week and what's important this month, right? And then I make a plan and I don't just talk about it right? I know exactly what my week, my month, and my year looks like, and I revise that as as needed, right? As things start to evolve and change and things are added and taken away and this, that, and the other, I start to revise, but I still have a picture and a plan of what things are going to look like for me when when everything is said and done, so that way I'm prepared when these little other things start coming up, right? But, (laughs) I've not always been this way, Um, what I've been notorious at in the past is, and maybe you can relate, 
is trying to use my mind as a filing cabinet, right? What I mean by that is I'll say, oh, I don't, I'll, I'll remember this. I don't need to write that down, right? Don't do that. <laughs> Develop a plan that shows you what your week looks like when it's finished. And here's the benefit to that. When you've planned and organized your day, your week, your month, and even your year, you're going to start seeing that your time as a teacher, as a human being, is so much more valuable, right? And when you start to see your own time as the most valuable resource that you have, because after all, it is, it is your life, right? You will start to become more protective over it, and you'll begin prioritizing what's important, right? Because our time, our time is precious, okay? So the bottom line here is that we have to change our thinking as teachers because we, we can't. It's just, just the way human life is. We can't always change our external circumstances. Sure, sometimes maybe, right? But the bottom line is, is that in most situations we can't, and if we try, here's what's going to happen. And you know this. <laughs> I've been there myself, so I can definitely relate. What's going to happen as a result of that is we're going to start to gravitate towards the people who are going to indulge our complaints and our procrastination rather than those people who are going to help us attack our problems and inspire us and motivate us and make us feel passionate again, right? So the key, the two key takeaways from this Facebook Live is to, number one, plan your day, your week, your month, and your year. And I have a whole system. I can show you that. So please feel free to book your free consult. But also, the next thing is, is that once you've got your day, your week, your month plan, the second takeaway is to find someone, right? doesn't matter who it is, as long as they're good at it. Find someone who is excelling at what you're not excelling in, right? And talk to them. Find out what they're doing. And then go do it. So anyway, that's it for today, and I just wanted to say hello and give you a little chat, a little bit of a pick-me-up. So I hope that you're having a wonderful day, a wonderful night, and get some sleep and everything. And don't forget to um, book your free consult with me, or you can join my Facebook group page for more insider tips and tricks for this online teaching thing. And I hope you guys have a great night. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye.